Well, hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome right into this Adobe After Effects tutorial where today we're going to take a look at creating a progress bar with expressions. Now, this progress bar is something that you can set the duration of. So if you want a graphic that slowly fills up the screen over the course of a period of time or just a loading bar that shows people how long a segment in your show or your video or your vlog or whatever it is, this is the perfect way to create something like that. It's the effect we use on our videos when uh, when I'm talking about a sponsor. And speaking of sponsors, this video is sponsored by our good friends over at Production Crate. Um, and when I, when I talk about them, you'll see a little bar show up at the bottom of the screen, maybe not here in the intro, but later on in the video when we do our little sort of mid-roll piece for ProductionCrate.com. They're sponsoring this video. They are great. There's a link for them down in the bio. I'll talk a little bit more about them later on, but they're helping us continue bringing free tutorials and videos here on this channel to you. So for that, we're greatly appreciative of them. If you enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel here, and let's jump into Adobe After Effects right now and check this thing out. All right, let's try to get through this uh, relatively quickly. Here in After Effects, I am going to create a new composition. You can name the composition anything you want. I'm just going to name mine Progress. Uh, width of 2560 by 1440. I'm going to go with the straight frame rate of 30, not the 2997. I'm going to go straight 30. And I'm going to set the duration here. I'm going to type in uh, 50,000. And that's going to give me a duration of five minutes. Just because, hey, maybe my progress bar will happen over the course of five seconds. But maybe I'll want to really string it out and make it happen over the course of three or four minutes or five minutes. Five minute uh, sequence or sequence, a five minute composition gives me some options. That's what I like. I'm going to hit OK here and we have our composition. Now what we'll do is we will take our rectangle tool up here and I'm just going to draw a rectangle kind of of any shape on and, and place it on my stage right here. Uh, you can also give it any fill you want. In fact, let's give it a nice bright red color, something like that. Maybe we'll go with like a red bordering on like hot pink. So we'll go with something like that. I like it. And I don't want this to have a stroke, so I just up here, you can go stroke and make sure you cross out stroke if you have a stroke. And now we want to set this to an exact size. So over here we have the shape layer that was created, as you can see. And I am going to come down into the context, into, uh, into the contents, into the rectangle. I'm going to choose the rectangle path, and I'm going to open that up, and here we have our size. Now I'm going to unlink this, because I want to be able to set a specific size and height. So I'm going to go with the width of my composition here, 2560. And I'm going to choose a height of, I don't know, let's go like 50 pixels, um, just so it's, it's thin, but it's still definitely noticeable. Let's also take the shape and just align it to the bottom and the middle of our document. So over here in the align panel, we can just make sure align layers is set to composition. Well, my mistake, align layers to composition. And we'll go ahead and say, yeah, align this uh, horizontally and then just slide it all the way down to the bottom. So now we have this bar running across the bottom of our document. Now I'm going to just collapse the stuff real quick. I'm going to choose my shape layer. I'm going to hit the letter S to bring up scaling. And I'm going to unlink the chain here as well because I only want to worry about the horizontal scaling. We want this progress bar to scale horizontally. But you can see here, if we tell our code, look, start this thing at zero and then just scale up, it's going to be this bizarre double edged progress bar, which is not really at all what we want. So we need to go in here and, and change this. And that's going to require us to move this little thing here, this anchor point. The anchor point is sort of the origin location of the scaling. So that's why we're scaling back toward the middle, because this is kind of in the middle. We can move that anchor point by using the pan behind tool or the anchor point tool up here. And then we can just simply click and drag that anchor point and place it wherever we want. Now I want my progress bar to begin over here on the left. So I want to place my anchor point just exactly on the left. So in order to do that, I'm going to zoom way in to make sure I get a really nice precise uh, position on this. I'll grab that pan behind anchor tool and I'm going to drag this down and I really want to make sure I line this up as perfectly as possible. Um, just something like that looks like it's nicely aligned with the lines. I think that'll be good enough for what we are going for here. I should say this is a relatively important step, so you want to make sure you do this and try to get it as close as possible. All right, I'm going to zoom out here. And now it's time to kind of bring this progress bar to life with some expressions and specifically some math. So hang with me here as we figure all this out. All right, I want to take a quick break from this tutorial and talk about Production Crate. Uh, give them a proper shout out. ProductionCrate.com, well, they're a great site for picking up a wide variety of video editing assets. They've got transitions. After Effects templates, lens flares, visual effects, and so much more. You've just really got to check them out. Not only do they offer a number of free resources you can go and download from them right now, but a subscription is a mere $39 per year, which equals $3.25 a month. And who can't afford that? That's the real question. That is hardly a heavy price to pay to have instant access to a library of video editing assets that you're sure to love. Go check them out and consider subscribing over at ProductionCrate.com by using the link in the description of this video. ProductionCrate.com, thank you so much for supporting us. We love you. We, uh, we are very happy to have you here as a sponsor on the channel. And with that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into After Effects and complete this effect. 
Let's go ahead first to just help understand what's happening. Let's go ahead and add some text to uh, the stage here or the composition. I'm just going to type out the word time. Really, the word doesn't matter because we're about to replace it with some code here in a second anyway. And in order to do that, I'm going to bump down my text layer and bump down the text sort of sub object. I'm going to hold down my alt or option key and click on that little stopwatch next to source text. And now this opens up our expressions. I'm simply going to type in here the word time. This is going to use the time of the playhead and it's going to output that as the source text. So you can see here as I move the playhead, you can see I'm getting one, two, three, four, five. This is just kind of as seconds pass, one second, two seconds, three seconds. What are all these crazy numbers on the end? Well, that's all the decimal points because computer code tends to be pretty precise. So we have these sort of long, complicated looking numbers that are outputted. But don't worry, we can dumb this down a little bit. So we can select time and we can say, yeah, we want to output time, but I want to round it down. So we need to you type in here the word math and then we type period and then we'll type floor. And then the word time would go within parentheses. And then it's a good idea to close your lines off with a little semicolon. So you see that math with a capital M dot floor and then the word time in parentheses and a semicolon to close that line. Now, what's this doing? This is basically saying, look, take this number, the number that we have in the parentheses, which is going to be time, which is going to be the second amount and round it down to the closest number that math dot floor so it's going to make sure that we don't have all this decimal nonsense and we just have clean whole numbers look at that now we've got one and then two and then three and so on and so forth as this ticks down our timeline so this is just to give you an idea of how these expressions can output numbers because we need to be able to output a number here that is going to take the width of our composition and divide it by the number of seconds we want the bar to take to get across the composition. In this example, let's say I want the progress bar to be full and look like it does here when the playhead hits 30 seconds. So out here, right? By the time it gets out here to where this would say 30, we want this to be at 100% scale. So let's just clear out the code that we've created here. In fact, I can probably just hide this entire layer. I don't even need to worry about that because we're going to be working with the shape layer from now on. I just wanted to show you how expressions can output numbers and we're going to be using those numbers now to control the scaling of this piece of graphic. So we'll select our shape layer. We already have scaling brought up, but if you don't hit the letter S and we're going to alt or option click on this. Now this is a little more complicated here because like if I just type the word time and say make the scale equal to time, I'm going to get an error. You can see this project contains an expression error, error of one of one. And part of what's going on here is we need to constantly output two numbers, one for the width and one for the height. So if I, if I wanted to do this, I need to put this within what's called an array. So I need to create uh, square brackets. So these little square brackets, and then I can just type time and then say comma time and then at the end of it throw a semicolon and now what's going to happen is my shape is going to slowly grow as the time increases but you can see it just keeps growing and growing and growing that's not really what we want this is just to give you an example I could do something like say make the width 2560 and uh, the second number is going to be height and we could say you know make this 500 tall and you can see now we've got this rather large progress bar and I should say, this is percentage, this is not a pixels. So I would really maybe do something like go 200% and like 200%, but I'm not within the array. All right, we're gonna move on from that. Now you can see when I get rid of the expressions, we're just back to our 100% by 100%. I'm gonna try to avoid making the mistake I always do by over explaining and making things more complicated than they are. Let's alter option, click on scale again to open up our expressions. What we want to do is begin by creating a couple of variables. Variables, you can think of them like empty containers, and we can put anything we want into them. And once we have that information packaged up in there, we can reference it whenever we want. So the first thing we'll do, and I'm going to use very literal names for my variables. When you start getting really good at coding, you can just use a variable name like A and say A equals 500. Uh, let's say if, you, if, if the number 500 is important for something as you're coding. Again, this is very abstract. So in order to make it not so abstract, we're going to use longer names that take a little bit Bit longer to write but going to be easier to understand so the first variable we're going to write time of progress and i'm camel coding here so the first word lowercase and every following word is uppercase no spaces time of progress is the name of the variable and we're going to set say this is equal to 30. so this is well of course the time uh, that our our bar will take to progress across the screen 30 seconds that's just the number that we've chosen for that the next thing I'm going to do, and we need to add this to a new line, so I hit enter or return, I'm going to create another variable called chunks, and I'm going to I'm going to equal this to a piece of math. So I'm going to say 100, and you can use all sorts of different um, math operators. Like you can say plus, you could say minus, you could use the asterisk to multiply, uh, you could use a forward slash to divide, and that's what I'm going to do in this case. Chunks is going to equal 100 divided by time of progress. 
and then a semicolon. So why did I just write this this way? And don't worry about the error. We're not really outputting anything. We're just consolidating some of our data and information right now. So ignore the error for a second. Why did I just do this as a series of variables? Well, because... As we build out this code now, we can continually reference this time of progress number. And anytime, if, if this time of progress is written five times throughout our code, anytime we want to change the timing of the progress bar, all we need to do is come in here and change this number. So we could say, you know what? I actually want the progress bar to take 300 seconds, five minutes. So we could just change that to 300, boom, and all of the code would automatically update. We're going to leave this as 30. Let's move along to the next line here. Before we write anything else, what's going on here? Well, of course, we have our time of progress we just talked about. But this chunks variable, what we're doing is we're taking that time of progress and we're dividing it by 100. Why are we dividing it by 100? Because we know that 100%, that is going to be the percentage number that makes sure that our progress bar covers the entire screen or shoots across the entire screen. So if we divide 100 by the time of progress, that the, the answer to this little equation will be how much our progress bar needs to progress every every second to make sure that it gets across the screen in 30 seconds. So what's 100 divided by 30? 100 divided by 30 is 3.3333333. And 3.33333 times 30, that equals 100. So if the bar moves 3.33333% every one second over the course of 30 seconds, because 30 times 3.33333 is 100, over the course of 30 seconds, we will have a bar which which has a, ver a horizontal scale that is equal to 100 and 100% is a bar that's as wide as we've made it here, which is as wide as our composition. It's a little complicated to wrap your mind around it, but once you wrap your mind around it, it really makes a lot of sense. But what we need to do is we need to take this number here, this 3.33333 number, and we need to multiply that by wherever the frame is. So when this is up to 10 frames, for, or not frames, I'm sorry, seconds. So when this is up to 10 seconds here, when this gets up to 10 seconds, we should be 33.33333% across the screen, right? So we need to multiply this. So we're going to uh, we're going to add some code here. We're going to create one of those arrays. So I'm, I'm going to add an extra line here. We're going to go open and close square bracket. And the, the little piece of math that we need to do is take that chunks variable. We're going to say, look, chunks times time. That's going to be the number that goes into the width percentage. And then for the vertical, well, you can just stay at 100% because that's perfect. We, we don't want the vertical to change at all. So I'm going to click away from this. And you can see here what we've got, if I play through this, is we have a bar now that is going to move across the screen. And sure enough, I bet you when we get out here to 30 seconds, well, won't you look at that? There the bar is completely across the screen. We're just shy of 30 seconds, and it is just shy of being 100% across the screen. So again, what's happening here? Chunks, this number, 3.33333, is being multiplied by time, and time is whatever second our playhead is up to. So when it's up to 10 seconds, well, look at this. If we Let's just put this exactly at 10 seconds. 10 times 3.33333 is 33.3, .3, and what's the width in our scaling, 33.3. .3. So that number is being output perfectly, and that just ensures that when we get up to 30 seconds, we're at 100%. Now here's where the beauty of variables comes into play. We can change our time of progress and say, you know what, I actually want this to take 60 seconds, and that's the only thing we need to change. It's gonna automatically update now, and look at this. By the time we get out to one second, 60, or I'm sorry, one minute, which is of course 60 seconds, our bar is now complete. So that's where the power of using these variables stands. So I'm gonna set that back to 30. Let's drag the playhead out once more and look at what happens here. Even when we get beyond 30 seconds, the playhead just keeps on chugging. It just keeps cranking right through um, because setting this 30 time of progress, that's really only setting the rate at which this thing moves. We need to basically tell, look, once you get to the end here, stop moving. So we're going to use what's called an if else statement. So I'm going to come in here. We're going to add a couple lines. I'm going to drag down my expression window and we're going to go ahead and we're going to type if, and then in parentheses, we're going to say, look, if time, and then we can use an angle bracket just like we learned in math class. So we're going to say if time is less than time of progress. So if the playhead, the bar, where that is, like right now would be the time would be 30. If time is less than time of progress, which would be 30. So if it's less than 30, if it's like 29, then we'll allow you to go ahead and output this this math that's always going to be changing the the horizontal scale. So here within the if statement, we're going to add an open curly bracket, hit enter, return a couple times, close curly bracket, move up into this little statement. I just hit tab to indent a little bit here. And in here, I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut 
just to move it off of there. And I'm going to place this within this if statement. And then what I'll do after this curly bracket, I'm going to add the word else. So if time is less than time of progress, execute this continually moving thing that's going to change how wide this is. But if time is not less than time of progress, well, what do we want you to do? Well, we simply want the scale to lock in at 100 width and 100 height and just stay there. Don't move. Don't do anything. So what's going to happen now is, of course, time is still less than, than that 30, the time of progress. So the animation is allowed to happen. And as soon as we get to 30, well, look what happens. No longer does that animation extend way beyond the edge of our composition. And again, because this is all locked into a variable, if I change time of progress to 60 seconds instead of 30, well, it's going to just progress right up to 60 seconds, and then it's just going to stop. It's very simple. It's part of the beautiful way that variables are used when you're, when you're coding something like this. Now, one thing you might want to do is just add a little comment here. So you can add a forward slash and asterisk, and you can say change the time of progress var to change the duration of the loader or something like that and then asterisk and forward slash and that just places a comment in there this doesn't change any of the code all it's going to do is tell somebody who's looking at this document look if you want to change the speed at which this loader bar heads across the screen we'll change the time of progress variable and you could even add a second note and say something like number is equal to the number of seconds, i.e. 30 equals 30 seconds. Something like that, just to be very clear so there's no confusion and everybody knows what's going on. And we could add a little bit of space there just to make sure it looks nice. This way, if somebody comes in and has no idea what's been done, they can just read your notes and see right away, okay, well, I want this to be two minutes long, so I'll change this to what would that be 120 seconds, and then boom, we have a loader that's going to take two seconds to get across the screen. Did I say two minutes? I meant two seconds. Two seconds to get across the screen. So it's nice and simple, and it just lets people know what is going on here in your document. And there's really a lot you can do. You could link this time of progress variable number. You could link that up to a, a slider. Now there'd be some other code you'd have to throw in there to make sure the slider's limited and things like that. So I don't want to get into that in this tutorial. I just wanted to break down kind of a, 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 I don't know, maybe intermediate piece of expression code, let you know what's going on, help get you more acquainted with using variables, and create this nice little loader bar that you can use for all kinds of different things here in After Effects. So there you have it. That is how to create this simple loading bar effect. And really, as you're going through this, just being able to get numbers and hook them to different parameters of graphics, you can do all sorts of time-based animation, whether or not you're following the time on the timeline or developing your own number like we are here for the duration of an object. All kinds of different loaders, graphics, stuff that, that changes depending on the environment. Expressions in Adobe After Effects, they really make that stuff, I, I shouldn't say easy, but they make it possible. And the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're into Discord, we've got a Discord chat. Again, there's a link down in the bio for that. And if you are on Instagram, consider following me on Instagram at tutvid. And for all of this expression, nonsense, and numbers, and math, and ay 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 Guys, for this one, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.